Hi everybody, welcome back to Julie in the Garden. Today, I just wanna quickly take you around and show you some of my favorite things that are happening in both the potager and orchard and kind of around the house a little bit too. Um, so yes, just a few things and then hopefully I will get to um, some more full tours later this month, but I wanted to show you some stuff, so let's go check it out. First thing I want to show you here are the Brussels sprouts. Now, there are a lot of holes in them. You can actually, there's a cabbage white flying around. I haven't actually done anything about the cabbage whites. Uh, these ones were transplants I had bought and they were big enough when I went in and they, they're still growing. So I've harvested some broccoli already. It looks like I need to harvest some more. It's been really hot, so I think that took a beating. But what I really want to show you was the Brussels sprouts because this is the third year I'm trying and this is the first time I'm actually getting Brussels sprouts. And yes, they do have some holes, but they are growing. Let's take a minute to look at this gorgeous sunflower. It's my first one open and it is so beautiful. I want to move it towards us, but that bee looks so happy on there. I just kind of want to let it be. So I'll put in another picture here I took the other day when it first opened. I'm so excited about it. It is really close to a lot of those other buds though, so I decided not to cut this one. Um, I didn't grow a ton this year. I've got this little tiny patch, so next year I'll try to grow more. And I actually don't know what variety it is because I kind of just mixed up a lot of my old varieties that I had, just a few left in, in each seed packet to plant them and just see what would happen. And this is beautiful. It looks a little bit like the Pro Cut Plum, but it's not because I didn't have that. But um, yes, it's just gorgeous. Oh, the bee's gone. Let me, let me get this. Let's say happy, happy, happy sunflower. Oh, I love it. I also have some amaranth growing. Let me come around here. This one's just getting its tassels or just this first tassel is just growing down. Um, I tried to grow this last year and it didn't, it didn't work. I think just because it was so dry. So this is um, just, I think when the seed was started, it needed to be wet. I don't know if, um, if it, it's supposed to tolerate some drought. So we should be good now. Um, although it's been, we had a couple days of a lot of rain at some point, but they're looking beautiful and either way happy with those. Also in this bed that I wanted to show you is my zucchini. Look at how big it is. I mean, those of you who've grown zucchini before might, like this might be normal for you, but my two that grew last year were much smaller than this and I didn't get a lot of zucchini. And so I'm so happy. Let me show you one of the, the biggest one we have right now. I have a ton of big ones. I'll try it. I'll insert a picture here too of the harvest I've done recently. I got to make some stuff with them, but this is the one I might, I might harvest that today or I could leave it another day or two. Yes, there's several more growing in there, and oh, this bed is turning out to be one of the better ones, and it was kind of one that I just, I planned late. This is not what was supposed to be in this bed when I planned originally, and I am really happy with uh, how it turned out. More flowers. My zinnias, whenever I plant them, never disappoint. I love them so much, um, and I've picked quite a few from this, and they just keep coming back. That's one of my favorite things about zinnias. Um, and look at these double ones here. So these are a combination of all the queen lime zinnias. So there's queen lime red, queen lime blush, queen lime orange, and queen lime, just queen lime, I think. So I think the one I just showed you is a red. We've got, um, let's see, I think like these ones here are blush. That one looks like a lime. And the orange is very orange. Orange is not my favorite. I'm mean, just not my favorite color in general. But all these look so pretty together. So I've just been doing arrangements just of these. And uh, yes, they are glorious. The bees are out today, which is making me so happy. I want to update you on my volunteer tomato plant. It's just growing like crazy and just kind of taking over here. And I'm just letting it. You can see there, I. Ooh, it looks like it's getting some stripes. I'm, I'm not sure if it's gonna be one of the, uh, maybe one of the Bumblebee series, either Sunrise or Purple, but hopefully it'll keep growing and we'll get to find out. Over to my tomatoes and basil. So we, we did have some casualties, you can see here, from tomato hornworms. Um, it was really, really hot uh, over the last week. We had, I think, four days in the 90s, and so I wasn't out here and doing like general maintenance and I need to get back on it and maybe come up with more of a schedule for it. Uh, with the baby, it's a little tough. But these ones are all growing beautifully and we're starting to see 
some tomatoes forming. Oh, let me find one. There's some in there. Uh, this one I think is a Paul Robeson. Um, once they are all fruiting, which hopefully they will all fruit, I'm hoping to do a tour of just the tomatoes. So I'm not going to go too in detail right now. we got some ground cherries that are just starting to grow. These ones went in at the same time as the tomatoes. So everything went in later than I normally would put it in. Um, so we normally have tomatoes by now, but that's okay. They're growing and they're in and I'm excited about it. Let's see here. These are all cherries. Oh, I see a hornworm. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yuck. All right, we're going to go take care of that. My basil is also growing wonderfully. I don't have as much as the purple basil, but um, I've already picked a bunch of the other basil. It's super happy. It's My kiddos are going to help me look for tomato hornworms now. Yep. We've got... That's what we assumed so we grabbed our smashing stuff. <laughs> The cucumbers are also growing pretty well. We've got that one vine there that died and I don't know why. I have to come out this afternoon to harvest and do some maintenance. So I'm gonna take it off then. Um, there are cucumbers growing. That one is ready to go in. And I'm hoping to make some pickles. So I'll try to take you along. Oh, oh, these are my basil here. I also need to pick because that one's about to bolt. We'll pick that in a little bit. These are large leaf and I've got some uh, large leaf basil here and then I've got some little um, this is the Greek dwarf, one. and I love it so much. Okay. Oh, you found a hornworm? Oh, you found damage? That's that's where I pulled. No, hornworm. Oh, another one. All right. And in case you were wondering, this is cherry caramel phlox. I haven't picked any yet. Um, I may just do a sweet little bouquet with it. So we'll, we'll see. I, lo I love it so much. <laughs> I don't know if I want to pick it yet. And more flowers. Oh, I love them so, so much. Look at my snapdragons. So I haven't been picking. So for cut flowers, you're not supposed to pick them this open, but I'm going to come back out with my daughter later and we're going to um, harvest some that are op more open for us so that those plants continue to flower. And then hopefully I can find some to make a bouquet for a friend that aren't as open. Um, but it, we just don't, you just don't get as long of a base life, so it's still okay. And the cosmos are growing. Some of the plants haven't budded up yet, but some of them are going crazy great like these ones I think are a double click um, and look how pretty those are those will be coming in with me later oh. and look at this one there's a little bug on there but still beautiful the pumpkin patch is growing okay I'm actually really enjoying having the landscape fabric um, because I really has cut down the weeds in the area that I areas that I have it Let me show you a couple pumpkins that are growing here And then I'm going to show you a couple I just found in the other area. This is my biggest one in this patch right now It's a rouge vie des temps And I think there's one more little one of this variety That I saw over here. Let me see if I can find it again. Here it is Just starting to form there. So those are the only two I've seen in here right now But it, you know these ones went in really really late so, um, and there's a lot of buds and flowers and I've been seeing some bees, so I'm hopeful we will have more. Hopefully they'll have time to ripen. I think as long as they get most of the way there, I think I can harvest them to dry and, and let them dry and or finish ripening. You can let me know what you think. I mean, I'm going to let them go as long as is possible um, until, until there's going to be a hard freeze. So... That's that pumpkin patch. I'm going to bring you back over to where we started in the potager just to show you a couple other pumpkins that are growing. Okay, before we get to the pumpkins, I got distracted by this marigold. Isn't it so pretty? Look, it's a row of marigold. That's what I was going for. And I think this is French marigold. I'll ha I'd have to double check. It's so pretty. I also stuck some melons in this bed. Um, they don't, I mean, they're still alive, so I don't think we're going to get any melons off of them this year. It's way too late, but I stuck them in there because I figured it was better to get them in the ground than just to throw them out. Okay, so here is, this is actually a pie pumpkin over in this area growing, and there's another little one in the grass here. I need to give them more space next year, I think. Um, I tried to plant some beans in here. They, I don't know what I was thinking. They, they're bush beans, and they don't have enough room. There are some climbing beans, but the poles fell over, and so I just kind of left them. So I don't know what they're going to do, but they're, they're over in there as well. This is quite a jumble. There's another pumpkin growing in here. And I think I saw possibly some honey nut squash, but I don't remember where I saw it now. So 
um, some things growing and I'm happy with that. Um, those ones look like they will have time to mature. Here are the other ones I saw. Now I have to follow the vine back to where this is. This could be, ac I don't think it's acorn. It could be acorn though. It could also be spaghetti squash <laughs> or honey nut squash. So we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, I think I might have said that was the last thing in the potager, but, but this time, just one more thing. This is the last thing, I promise. Then we're going to head over to the other side of the house. Look at those nasturtiums. I think they are orchid cream. I planted a bunch from seed in here uh, when I put my carrots. Did I put it at the same time as carrots? I don't know. At some point. And look at them blooming now. I was concerned because there were no blooms. I think I want to put some in a vase, and then I think I'm going to um, like harvest some to, to dry or to put on... Maybe I have, I have some salad. I'm going to have some salad this week on the meal plan. So maybe I will put some on my salad. Yum. I am actually taking you behind our garage to the compost bin. Because look at these tomatoes. This is so crazy. Um, these are growing out of my second bin. And this is why I haven't moved the compost yet. Because <laughs> I want to see if I can get tomatoes off of these. I saw some green ones forming before. My daughter said she got some hornworms off of these this morning when she took some compost out. I don't even know. If, it's like a jungle of tomatoes here. Up, oh, see, look. Put you in here. Look at those beautiful fruits. I am not even sure what kind this is. Could even be more than one kind. But how fantastic is that? Oh. There's also some squash and what I think is catnip growing over here next to it. So um, my mower guy has been mostly mowing around. I think there's another tomato in here too. This is so awesome. <laughs> I actually intend at some point to put just some like pieces of wood around like even with the compost bin and make this into a little like fun bed area. I was thinking of doing like a climbing plant of some sort. And then um, this is like last year I threw pumpkins in there. For this very reason so um, it might be a spot where I just throw pumpkins and tomatoes and see what happens because this is fun okay so we're moving over to the other side this is the orchard it's looking great I mean it's pretty weedy but you know things are growing so I'm happy with that okay I'm gonna film a little bit and my kids are having fun on their playset, so that's always nice but what I really want to show you right now is this hydrangea it came back and it's beautiful. It's my only hydrangea that came back. It is, some of the leaves are a bit brown because I think just because it's the heat and yeah, it was just a lot for it. But there's new leaves forming too and some of them are starting to turn tinges of pink. So yes, I'm really, really excited about this plant. I'm going to quickly show you the pollinator garden as well. Um, it's it's good for its first year with all these in here. There are some beautiful flowers coming up. Um, there are more weeds than I would like and some issues, but just let me scan it quickly for you, show you some good things happening. we got some Rudbeckia here. That is glorious. I'll also show you the tiny Rudbeckia on the other side. It's so cute and I love it. We've got a couple Echinacea plants here. So this is actually called Echinacea Julia. And it starts this like deeper orange color and then fades. It's so cute. Um, I think it's going to grow taller next year. I just put it in this year. So there's that. Um, I need to, yeah, I need to do some maintenance in here. I'm hoping at some point to give you a tour, but definitely need to do some maintenance first. This is some milkweed that went in and uh, it like just recently went in. So it's looking good for that. It was blooming at some point. Yay, one zinnia is blooming. I have hope for the rest now. I've got all of the, I put a bunch of uh, zinnias and some cosmos in, and I think some flocks. Oh, there's a little flock coming too, I'll show you that. Um, I put them in really late, so I wasn't sure how they were going to do, but they're still alive and some of them are blooming, so that's, that's exciting. Update on my trees, we got two peaches from this peach tree and it actually looks okay. I was really worried about it having peach leaf curl at the beginning of the year or peach rust or something bad, but it, it actually looks okay. And um, it gave us two peaches, two good sized peaches. I'll put a picture in here. We just ate them as a snack yesterday. So um, hopefully more in future years. Um, back over, I think these apples might be just about ready to harvest. 
Um, there's one that I need to just take off because it doesn't look great, but some of these are still kind of small. But I mean, they're ripening. There's some, I mean, they don't look perfect. There's obviously some bug damage and stuff. Um, but, you know, the tree is growing and it's producing and it's only, well, let's see, we planted these in 2019. So, and they may have been about a year old then. Um, they were tiny little, little whips. So it's, it's exciting to get anything. Um, this one, I think I mentioned earlier, was producing, it had some apples on it, but the deer came and ate those along with some branches. So we're not going to get them this year. And, and the other one didn't produce any this year. That's the Duchess of Oldenburg over there. Um, but that's fine. Hopefully next year. And the pears, I think, are just about ready to harvest. I have that on my list for this week. Come get some pears. Let me find, fortunately, a lot of them are high up here. There's one I can show you there. It's a little windy, but you should be able to see it there. Yeah, those are ready, I'm pretty sure. There should be enough for a, a pear pie. I think so, I think so. Not nearly much as much as last year. Last year was crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> it was hard to process all those. Okay, the last area I want to show you is the berry garden. There are some exciting things happening in here. Unfortunately, we're between raspberries, so I don't have those to show you right now. Um, I'll see if I have a picture here. We tried the purple ones came in this year. They were so tasty. Um, and it looks like the yellow ones are flowering. I can show you, you know what? I can show you the flowers on those. This is the Anne yellow flowering and producing some fruit there. There's also some more fruit developing on this one here. And the other side there is a red, um, either Killarney or Heritage, I have to look it up, um, that I think those are forming, starting to form some fruit as well. We got some good, a good crop of blueberries this year. We actually weren't as fast as picking them as I want to, and it all desperately needs to be weeded again. <laughs> like I just weeded that other bed. Um, but I need to weed and thoroughly weed and compost. Anyway, the ones on this side that I'm showing you are already done fruiting. There are the earlier ones, well, early mid. And over here, please ignore the weeds. Um, these ones are fruiting. Oh, look at that one. I wanna pick it, I'm gonna pick it. Mm. This one, I was out here the other day, I picked all the ripe ones. Looks like a few more are ripe, but some of them just under. Look at all of those berries on this plant. That is just incredible. And the last thing are blackberries. Look at those vines grow. A lot of that growth is from this year which assuming they all survive means we're going to get a really good harvest next year. But even just this year, I wasn't expecting much because they didn't grow much last year. I was actually really concerned about them. But there are these red bunches everywhere. We actually, this is kind of our second cropping. Um, I don't know if it doesn't really have two crops per se, but um, we've already had quite a harvest um, from them. I really need to tie these up. It's on my list. Um, let me see if I can find, uh, well, that was, some of them are starting to brown down here. But, um, so they, they turn red and then they turn black and then you're supposed to wait until they're not shiny anymore to eat them, but it's really hard to wait that long. Oh, here's another set down here. I think I said that was my last thing, but I lied again because I did just want to quickly show you some of the stuff around the border of the house. Now, most of the border of the house is a mess and um, yeah, it's not going to get done this year. Uh, maybe next year. We'll see. We'll see. But I planted up um, some pots outside my doorway and um, I have some white begonias and some red begonias and they're, they're looking really pretty. So I just want to show you that. This is the state of the entry, the front walkway and entr entrance right now. Uh, I swear I, I weed it actually kind of regularly because I can see it at my window. Uh, so, but um, I, got, I got some of the weeds out of the begonias this morning so I could show them to you. Um, but even with the weeds, they're growing really well. These again got in so late, they were, they were sitting waiting for me to put them in for, I mean, weeks. And uh, there's um, here, this is saxifrage, and it had really pretty pink blooms. It's just done blooming, but it's supposed to be perennial, so that should come back. Well, we'll, we'll see if it comes back. I'm gonna leave it. The begonians are annual, so um, I will, I probably, I might get the same thing next year, because I just love them. And my hookera that I planted back there, look at that one 
I love that one there. I don't even remember the name of it. I'll have to, I might be able to find the tag, um, but I did that on either side. Let me show you on the side here. And they look glorious. Pansies are actually still going, still going. And I've got my honey berries in these pots that look good. I, I'm hoping to get bigger pots. And then since they have been doing so well on the porch, I'm thinking of just potting them up into bigger containers, maybe wrapping them in burlap for the winter. Although they're really hardy, so I probably don't even need to do that. And then just having them live on the porch. Okay, and then these are the pots, how I did them this year. That's the alyssum is growing so well. And then I got, um, these are impatience here. These are pretty, let's see. I don't know if they're double impatience or what they're called. They kind of looked like little roses to me. And they're so cute and pretty. And then um, this, I don't know what this is called either. I'm sorry, but the leaves are so cool. Yeah, and this one started to bloom a little bit. Um, and then I had a begonia back here. Oh yeah, it's not doing as well. It's like a pico tea maybe, or it had that. So I love how the alyssum looks just like spilling over the edge there. I kind of wish they were, they were higher up. <laughs> I'm trying to move the camera. That doesn't work well. <laughs> I wish they were higher up. Um, but yeah, I might do that again next year with just adding some alyssum. And I think they need a little more height maybe. Um, the hooker I put in this year, I didn't, they didn't flower. So, um, I will think about that for next year, but so happy with the, just kind of romantic. Okay. These, these are not looking at their prime, but I wanted to just capture them for you. I, you know what? I think I probably took a picture of them at their prime. If I did, I will put it in here. It's just, we had the really, a lot of heat and a lot of, uh, torrential rain after the heat. So, um, but these are really pretty red begonias. And I really like the pop of color here as you're coming in. And then the other flower here is Bacopa. Um, they kind of come in and out of flower. So again, they're not really looking their best right now. Um, but I've got several flushes of flower for them. And then I've got some Love and a Puff growing behind. It's actually, hold on. The Love and the Puff growing behind. It's growing better on this side. So you can see I had this on here last year too. I love the little delicate flowers and then they'll get a puff for the seeds. And we're back around to where we started. I hope you enjoyed the peak of what's happening in the garden right now. Again, I'm going to try doing more thorough, longer tours uh, later in the month. They might end up happening beginning of September, but, um, and we'll see if I, I might sneak some videos in between now and then. Um, but right now I'm pretty busy between harvesting and setting up for the school year to start and feeding a baby every two to three hours. So I hope you guys are all having fun in your garden. Until next time, happy gardening.